Periodic Trends There are four main trends in the periodic table. The atomic radius, electronegativity, ionization energy, metallic character. These trends are all shaped by the interactions between the positive charge of the atomic nucleus, the negative charge of the inner electrons, and the negative charge of the outer electrons, or valence electrons. Due to the increasing size of atomic orbitals at higher energy levels, we expect the atomic size to increase as the period increases. So as you go down this way. Due to the effective nuclear charge when moving from left to right across a period, we would expect atomic size to decrease when moving across a period. The next slide shows the actual data. Atomic radii trend. What is the trend in atomic size across a period? What's the trend in atomic size down a group? Well, you probably don't know yet, so we're just going to pull this aside and look at it and see what we can come up with. As you go across the periods, right, that's in that direction, we can see that the size of the atom gets smaller. And as we go down a group, we can see that the size of the atoms get larger. We're going to spend some time now explaining why that happens. Now let's get into ionization energy. A neutral atom has equal number of protons and electrons. For example, a neutral magnesium atom has 12 protons, each with a positive charge, and 12 electrons, each with a negative charge. So it has a net zero charge. Your 12 plus plus your 12 minus, and you get a net charge of zero. The ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove an electron from an atom. When you remove an electron from an atom, you wind up with a positively charged ion, which is known as a cation. And a nice way to remember that is a cation is positively charged, cats have paws, or you can just remember it. So we have magnesium here. We take the electron away and we're left with magnesium plus. So it has 12 protons, 11 electrons, 12 minus one, positive one. Net charge is positive. And here's the electron that left. The first ionization energy is the energy required to remove the first electron, which we showed on the previous slide. The second ionization energy is the energy required to remove the second electron. So now we've got two electrons taken out. So we have magnesium goes into magnesium 2 plus plus two electrons. And that's the second ionization energy. Applying Coulomb's law helps us understand how ionization energy changes among elements. So we'll start with lithium. It has these two inner electrons, shielding one valence electron. Beryllium, two inner electrons, shielding two valence electrons. So what is the force between the nucleus, the protons in the nucleus, and the valence electrons? Well, for lithium, this guy is shielded by these two electrons, so it has an effective nuclear charge of just plus one. So the force is Ke squared over R squared. For beryllium, again, you have the two shield, two shielding electrons here, but you have four protons. So you have a charge of two, right? You have two proton, basically two positive charges acting on your beryllium valence electrons. So the force on each of beryllium's electrons is two Ke squared over R squared. Which atom is held together more closely? Since beryllium holds on to its electrons tighter, it holds them more closely. So it will require more energy to take away an electron. The ionization energy of beryllium is higher than lithium. As electrical force increases, the atom holds on to its electrons tighter. The nucleus is attracting them stronger. It will require more energy, and that's ionization energy, to take them away. As force increases, ionization energy increases. So how does Coulomb's law affect the atomic radius? How will it affect the ionization energy? And how will the trend in atomic size relate to the trend in ionization energy? It's always good when you can tie together different phenomena. As the electrical attraction between the nucleus and the outer electrons increases, which is shown by Coulomb's law, the atomic radius decreases and the ionization energy increases. 
the trend of atomic radius and of ionization energy have an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other goes down. Atomic radius increases when moving down the periodic table and decreases in moving to the right. Ionization energy, on the other hand, decreases when moving down the periodic table and increases when moving to the right. Compare the ionization energies for magnesium, aluminum, and silicon. First, you find Coulomb's equation for each, making sure you take into uh, account the effect of nuclear charge, which for magnesium, the effect of nuclear charge would be 2, aluminum 3, silicon 4. Then order the elements in increasing ionization energy. So that would be from smaller force to greater force. So the increasing order of ionization energies is magnesium is less than aluminum, which is less than silicon, because silicon is holding on to its valence electrons a lot stronger because there's a stronger nuclear, uh, stronger force between the nucleus and the valence electrons. So here's our order. The least ionization energy is magnesium. The nucleus is holding on to them the least, aluminum a little more, and silicon holds on to those valence electrons the most. We have demonstrated with three elements that Z effective will increase and the force on electrons increase as you go across a period. This makes it harder for an electron to be taken away, so the ionization energy increases as you go across a period. You can see for this cool three-dimensional chart how the ionization energies get greater. Right? Here's the yellow guys, here they're small, gets bigger with blue, bigger with purple, bigger with the light blue, and it just keeps increasing. Also, and we didn't cover this yet, but you'll see that the ionization energy also increases as you go down the family. We're going to do that next. For additional ionization energies, i.e. you want to remove the second electron, the third electron, just intuitively it seems like it would require more energy, right? Because it's closer to the nucleus, so it's holding on to it tighter, and that's true. When all valence electrons have been removed, leaving the atom with a full P subshell, the ionization energy becomes incredibly large. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to attract other electrons. Using Coulomb's law, an atom with a high attractive force with its own electrons will also have a high attractive force with other electrons. So use Coulomb's law to rank boron, carbon, and nitrogen in terms of increasing force. The relative electronegativity goes like this. Boron is less than carbon, which is less than nitrogen. Why is that? Well, in the periodic table, you'll find boron, then carbon, then nitrogen in the same period. So nitrogen has more protons, so it has a greater effective nuclear charge and hangs on to its electrons a lot stronger, which means it'll attract other electrons more stronger. So what do we have here? Electronegativity will exhibit the same trains as ionization energy because you're, in this case nitrogen holds on to its electrons greater than carbon, which holds on to it greater than boron. So it's harder to rip its own electrons off, but it's also, it has a greater attraction to stealing somebody else's electrons, right? So we have a higher ionization energy for nitrogen's electrons, and it has a higher electronegativity to attract other electrons. So electronegativity will decrease when moving from the top to the bottom. So it decreases that way, decrease, but it increases this way from left to right. The data in this chart support the analysis. As you go across a period, and it's this way, Z effective increases and the force between the nucleus and its electrons increases. As this force increases, it is easier for the atoms to attract other electrons. So electronegativity increases, just like we said on the previous slide. So summarizing, electronegativity increases as you go across a period. As you go down a group, the increased energy levels increase the radius of the atoms. The force between the nucleus and the electrons decreases, and it is harder for the atom to attract other electrons. So electronegativity will decrease going down a group. 
and you can see by the relative size of these uh, elements, right? Here's your high electronegativity, here's lower. For this course, at least, we're not going to worry about the electronegativities of the transition metals. And you can click here for a nice animation on the trends in electronegativity. Here's an exception to the electronegativity trends, noble gases. They are normally left out because even though they're the smallest atoms, they neither want electrons nor want to get rid of them. Using your knowledge of electron configurations, why do you think they are left out of these trends? So think about it a second, and then we'll pull out the answer tab. They all have full shells, so they're stable. Gaining or losing an electron would decrease the stability of a noble gas atom, so it just doesn't happen. We have an exception here and it includes the noble gases. Since they have a full shell, they are stable. Gaining or losing an electron would decrease the stability of a noble gas atom. So they do not attract electrons, so they are not electronegative. For a metal to conduct electricity or heat, it needs to have free electrons, electrons that can move throughout the metal and not be tightly bound to any particular atom. The metallic character of an element that's what we have here, is a measure of how loosely it holds on to its outer or valence electrons. The metallic character of an element is inversely related to its electronegativity, its ability to hold on to electrons. So on the periodic chart, metallic character will increase as you go from right to left across a row and from the top to the bottom of a column. Okay, we talked about electronegativity, so what's the relationship between first ionization energy and metallic character? Well, let's think about this. We want an a item with a lot of metallic character to lose its electrons very easily, so you don't want a lot of ionization energy to be required. So let's see if that plays out here. Yep, the greater your first ionization energy, or the energy required to remove electrons, that means the lower the metallic character of your element is. Summarizing the trends. Okay, we have atomic radius, ionization energy, electronegativity, and metallic character. When you move to higher periods, atomic radius increases, ionization energy decreases, as does electronegativity. See, they do the same thing. Metallic character increases, which matches atomic radius. The trend. Now let's say moving to higher groups, atomic radius decreases, and once again we have ionization energy and electronegativity doing the same thing, they both increase. Of course with the exception of the noble gases. And finally the metallic character decreases, which is in lockstep here with the atomic radius. Now this does not apply to all transition metals, but it works for what we've done so far.